everyone, it's Tappy Okuma here. I'm here with a tutorial on how to use uh, the Twitch integrated throwing system, aka tits. I even have a few extra tips on how to make it a bit more fun than just using what comes with tits by default. So I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. And this is where the creator has put it on itch.io, itch.io. Minimum $10. If you want to support them, you could pay a little bit more. And since I already bought it, I have access to download it. And right now there's two different versions, the normal version and then an experimental version. We're gonna download the normal one. So once you have purchased this, you can go to download and click on download. Once it's done downloading, you can uh, go ahead and open your downloads. As you may see, it's a zip file. So what you're gonna do is you can uh, copy this and we're just gonna throw it to wherever you want it. Copy paste it right on in there. And here, you wanna make sure you keep this whole folder together, this tits folder. It's very important. You don't wanna separate anything. This is the program we're gonna be using here, uh, this exe file. And if you want, you can right click and click on create shortcut. And you can put this shortcut wherever you want. Now that we've downloaded it, we're gonna open it up. Uh, and you say run anyway because we trust it. It's a, <laughs> it's all good. It's safe. And all this is going to show up. I know it's confusing, but it's okay. The first thing you're going to want to do is open up VTube Studio. I already have it opened because otherwise you wouldn't be seeing me talk right now. So I'm just going to drag this over here. And we're going to go to this cog right here. And make sure we're in the first thing. And we're going to scroll down. until we get to this point right here. And since this is a plugin for VTube Studio, we're gonna turn on this little setting right here that says Start API Allow Plugins. So this is gonna let us connect tits to VTube Studio. So we're gonna go back here and click on Connect VTS and then open up VTube Studio and it recognizes that you're trying to connect it. So you just click on Allow and then it's gonna line up the little green man with uh, the height of your VTuber. Um, if it does not, you could go to model calibration. I think it actually lined my, mine up already because I set it up before and it saved the settings. You can um, modify the height and everything so it lines up with the shape of your VTuber. So I'll go a bit more into that later because it kind of messes everything up right now for my recording. So anyways, now that Tits is connected to VTube Studio, we can go ahead and set it up in OBS. So now we're gonna wanna set up our settings in OBS. And uh, <laughs> I know it's a little confusing. We've got uh, streamception going on right now. But in order to make the Tits show up in our OBS, it's pretty easy. What we wanna do is we wanna add a game capture. And we're gonna go ahead and you can name it whatever we want. Let's call it tits, cause you know. And so when we get to this screen, what we're gonna do is catch, capture a specific window. We're gonna capture the Twitch integrated throwing system. We're going to, and then it's gonna show up here so we can see uh, the app actually in here. And then we want to allow transparency. This is very important. Once we check off allow transparency, this is gonna let it let us um, key out this little green guy so we don't see him. So once we click allow transparency, that's gonna hide the background so it's not blocking anything. So we're gonna go ahead and click okay. And now we have this like really trippy <laughs> thing going on right now. Uh, let me, uh, Go ahead and do that for a second. All right, now I'm hiding my OBS just so everything's a little bit easier to see. Now what we wanna do is we wanna line up the green man with our VTuber. And now this is what I mean when it comes to calibrating your model. So the way I do it is I line this guy up, I go back into Twitch integrated throwing system, we go to model calibration. I'm gonna line up the green man myself. It doesn't have to be perfect, uh, but I like to try at least a little bit. So once you have your uh, model all aligned, <laughs> you can close out of that. We're going to switch this back 
I'm going to switch this back off, and now I'm going to move my VTuber back. Because the one problem, actually, with this is if you see... If you go here, it's, you can see I reset my position in my VTube studio. So I'm just going to go ahead and move myself back down. It's kind of annoying that it does that every time you calibrate your model. But once it's calibrated, you won't have to calibrate it again, and you'll be all set. So get OBS back. Get our little green guy back. And now look, we can see he's aligned way better now. You can see on the top left is a VTS connected settings and model calibration. We don't want that to show up on the stream. So we're gonna turn on OBS. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold Alt and drag to hide all these words from the app. And now, We've got the little green guy and nothing else. And then the next thing we're gonna do is make this little green guy transparent so you can see me again. <laughs> if you go into your OBS, right, uh, click on the game capture, right click, go to filters. Uh, this little plus button right here, you're gonna click on it, add chroma key. You can name it whatever you want, but you can just have a chroma key right now and you could keep all the default settings, key color type green, it'll be perfect, it'll be fine. Now the green guy's gone. It's just me. This Twitch integrated sh uh, throwing system is still here. We just can't see it anymore. And in order to test out that it's working properly, we can press F9 on our keyboard. <laughs> and it will throw an object at you. And as you can see, I jumped and it scared me. So you can see it's throwing objects at us. And, and to show how it works, I'm just gonna turn off the green screen for a second. And you can see the items are targeting this little green guy. I'll turn the filter back on. So you should be all set, uh, except we're going to go back to uh, tits. And the last step you have to do to make sure it works on stream is to connect it to Twitch. And it's that easy. It's going to do it automatically. And now we're connected to Twitch. And the important thing about being connected to Twitch is that it's going to allow us to set up some pretty cool things like this. <laughs> Help! <laughs> it's pretty easy. It all comes down to models and triggers. So if you go to triggers here, you can see I have a lot of stuff set up here already. Uh, you can connect items to point redemptions on Twitch, to bit donations, to subscriptions, to gifted subs, to messages in chat, to commands. You could do all of that. To add a new one, you just click on add. And it'll pop up a new one down here. You could select what you want to use. Uh, let's say a chat message. And every time someone says the word primo gem, because I'm a Genshin streamer, <laughs> it will chuck a primo gem at me. Minimum amount means how many times they have to say that word in order for the object to be thrown at you. Amount of objects is how many objects you want thrown at you. Um, I'd be very careful with this. I would keep it low because too many will overwhelm your computer <laughs> and crash either VTube Studio or Tits. Uh, I speak from firsthand experience. <laughs> so I usually keep it around one or two. Cooldown is how long you want in between throws. If you set it to one second, it'll only go once every second. So that's to help prevent spam. So we have this added. And then we're going to go into Model Importer. This is really important. This is where all the neat stuff happens. So if we go here, these are all the objects. And if we go back, we can see all these default objects are being thrown at us. So if we go back to Model Importer, there's a really cool setting down here that says Import Emotes from Twitch. And if you do this, it'll automatically pull in all of your emotes if you want to chuck your own emotes at you. Uh, so that's just a quick and easy way to get some custom things to have thrown at you. But I don't want those right now. I'm more interested in 3D ones. So, in order to get cool 3D models, obviously you can make your own. And if you already know how to do that, Easy peasy. But if you don't and you just want to download some, uh, there's this amazing website that you can use called sketchfab.com. 
So this website is where I personally got all of my 3D models to be thrown at me, uh, like in the polar bear clip you saw earlier. So what you're going to want to do is go to Explore. And then let's say you want the polar bears. Just search for polar bear. And then this is really important. If you want to use these on stream or in a video or anything, you want to go to Licenses. And you want to pick anything that doesn't have NC. NC means non-commercial. So we can pick everything else. And then we want to make sure downloadable is checked. So that means all of these things are available to download. For example, this one is the guy that I have on my stream. Um, he's a cute little bear. If we scroll down, you can see CC attribution, Creative Commons, learn more. You must give appropriate credit with a link to the license and there are no additional restrictions. So this one is safe to use. So once you're logged in, you could go to download 3D model and it will say this model is free. And they make it really easy to get the, uh, the credits for the license, you just copy it. And uh, what I usually do is I open up a notepad, I paste them here and I put this in my Twitch channel. And we go to the about section, I put it under specs. I'm probably going to make a separate credit section, but 3D models for throwing at me. I listed all of them here with the links to Sketchfab and the license attribution. Now you can uh, download. We're going to want the original format, by the way. Um, when looking for formats to install, go to Model Importer. And then on the bottom left right here, we're going to click Import. If you go to Accepted Files, these are all the file types that it will accept. FBX is a valid file format. That polar bear that I just downloaded right now, it downloaded as a zip file, even though it's an, uh, an FBX. So if you click on open, he's going to show up right here. Even <laughs> the, the program is smart enough to recognize the zip. Sometimes the model isn't going to work. I have another polar bear right here. That's also an FBX file, but it's animated and it, it doesn't seem to work. It just doesn't import. Another issue you might run into when finding objects to use is that on Sketchfab, a lot of files are blend files and that makes it a little bit more difficult. If you're familiar with 3D modeling, that's a whole nother tutorial that can be made, but you can open up Blender and export the object as an FBX file yourself if you know how to do that, or you can look up how to do that. Otherwise, you're going to be out of luck and you won't be able to use it. Okay, so once you have your model imported, the next thing we're going to want to do is super important if you want to attach certain items to certain commands and stuff. We're going to uncheck absolutely everything in this top right for every default model that comes with this. Hopefully, in the future, it'll be a little bit easier to do this. But for now, I'm just going to manually uncheck all of them. Because if you don't do this, every single model is going to show up for every single channel point. It's a follow command to challenge this option. No, I'm not specific models per option. I'm not specific for each option. So, I'm just going to keep doing this. You might want to do this before you import all of your Twitch because otherwise, I'm going to unchecked. All right, once everything's all unchecked, we can specify what we want to use for what. I'm going to go ahead and import a Primo Gem because we talked about that earlier. All right, so I imported a Primo Gem and I have my bear. <laughs> Um, I'm going to uncheck everything from the Primo Gem. So we want a Primo Gem to show up when someone says Primo Gem. So we're going to click on chat message right here. So we're going to go back here and we're going to see the one we made earlier. Chat message, command Primo Gem. And that should be all set. So we're connected to Twitch. I'm going to open up my chat. Type in Primo Gem. Bam, I get hit in the face with a Primo gem. Now the fun thing is if you type it multiple times like this, it could be fun, but it could also crash your computer. <laughs> that Primo gem is uh, super high quality. So when I do more than one, it crashes me. So what you're gonna wanna make sure is when you're downloading stuff, uh, that they're not too high <laughs> polygons or else it will crash. Let's not use the Primo Jam. Instead, we are going to use this polar bear and we're gonna set it to, again, a chat message. Um, and then we're gonna go back to home. We're gonna go connect this to Twitch. 
because I forgot. We're going to go to triggers and we're going to go down to chat message. I'm going to delete all of these emote commands that it automatically set up. And we're going to change Primo Gem to Polar Bear. So now, if we were to go into our chat and type Polar Bear, bam, a Polar Bear gets thrown at us. And then this one, I don't know why, it, it just handles it better. I highly recommend trial and error before you go live to figure out what your computer, computer can handle or not. Um, I also have one, Hydrate one set up. So I have it set as a channel point redeem. I've got Hydrate. And we're going to go to Model Importer. We're going to import a bubble tea. Uh, we're going to uncheck everything, and we're only going to check it off for channel points. And we're going to go back home. And we can see we've got our redeem hydrate. So theoretically, whenever someone redeems hydrate in my stream, it should chuck a bubble tea at me. So let's try it out. Yep. You also want to make sure you have this uh, hydrate command set up in Twitch already. And as long as it has the same name as your command, so it's like hydrate with an exclamation mark here, just make sure you give it the right name and it will connect automatically. And then last but not least, let's say you don't want just one thing. Let's say you want to hydrate me with a can of beans as well. We could, we could go to the checkbox and check off the channel point redemption for the can of beans. So if you redeem the hydrate option, you can see I just got chucked with a can of beans <laughs> and a piece of boba. The one thing you can't do right now on tits is if you want to have different objects for different channel point redemptions. So if we go to model importer and we look up here, there's only one channel points. You can't have like five different channel point options. So if you wanted like a hydrate redemption and a food redemption, you can't specify you want the apples for the food only and the hydrate for the hydrate only. They're all going to mix up together. Oh, another thing to watch out for is uh, if the object has green in it, it's going to get taken out by the green screen. Oh, and uh, so sometimes this happens. It'll crash your VTube studio, but if you just give it a little bit, it will come back. So yeah, that is how to set up Twitch integrated throwing system with uh, your streams. Hopefully that was helpful. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I don't know everything. If you have any tips or tricks for myself, that would be greatly appreciated as well. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'm Tapio Kuma. I stream on Twitch almost every single day. And I post on YouTube and TikTok sometimes. And I also have a Twitter. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and have fun with tips. <laughs> Bye.